satyagraha the pursuit of truth through non violent resistance non violence peacefully protesting and avoiding armed conflict against the oppressor moral force awakening the conscious of the oppressor and the public change from within demonstrating the righteousness of the cause these are the foundational principles of gandhi ji's civil disobedience a movement that won india its independence and continues to inspire generations since civil disobedience is the act of peacefully refusing to obey the law or a policy civil disobedience is a form of protest used to draw attention to an injustice and to pressure the government to change the law civil disobedience is the cornerstone of indian democracy after all india's independence is built on it so why have the indian farmers protest been so polarizing is the world's largest growing economy so small that it can't accommodate its farmers is the noise from india's economic wins and successes so loud that it muffles the voices of the ones who feed the nation let's explore farmers have turned down a government offer the indian states of punjab and haryana borders will be sealed they are protesting the agricultural reforms that they say will leave them at the mercy of big corporations September of 2020 the Indian parliament with overwhelming support from Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha passed a series of laws aimed at reforming the agricultural sector the proposed laws became known as the farm bills the bills were aimed at deregulating the existing system of government run wholesale markets allowing farmers to sell directly to food processors and private buyers simply put The government wanted to remove itself as the middleman and turn agricultural commerce into a B2B operation. The result, the farmers would become businessmen. In theory, these bills would improve market efficiency and encourage private investment because much of rural India is run by local monopolies and a socialized approach to farming. These bills would expand the scope of a farmer's trade from a locally allotted set of crops to absolutely anything they could legally produce. When passed, the bills would increase competition in the market, something that objectively is economically necessary for growth. A farmer who may have been limited to only growing wheat so his neighbors could grow corn would suddenly be able to use his land for both. With no government implemented price floors, private buyers could have a direct one-on-one -on -one relationship with the farmers. The bills would allow for electronic trading of crops, expanded e-commerce sales of the farmers produce, direct to store production, and businesses to be conducted outside of one state or government mandated domestic trade areas. All of this looks fantastic on paper. a government that willingly wants to make itself smaller for its farmers removing itself from a farmers day to day operations encouraging and paving the way for immense decentralized commercialization of india's agricultural production but therein lies the fault commercialization and capitalism grow economies sure they put countries on the world map 50% of India's 1.4 billion people rely on agriculture for a living. Yet it only amounts to 20% of India's GDP. And India, a country with the world's greatest amount of alluvial soil and an astounding 46%, deserves to be at the forefront of agricultural growth. Despite being plagued by issues of hunger, India is self-sufficient in being able to feed its 1.4 billion people and counting every single day. So how do farmers feel about these laws? It's complicated. The farm bills quickly became known as anti-farmer laws. It is a tale as old as the industrial revolution. 
capitalism without labor welfare is simply corporate greed. And the farmers quickly saw through the shiny promises of bigger production, larger prospects, and financial self-reliance because it simply seemed like a pipe dream to them. Why? An astonishing 85% of Indian farmers have less than five acres of land, making high yield production really impossible. They simply lose out of the benefits purported by the farm bills. The cornerstone of the centralized government-run wholesale markets are minimum support prices, which dictates the price floors on agricultural goods. MSPs ensure that farmers, regardless of how fruitful or disappointing the harvest season, will at least break even on the crops, if not walk away with a small profit. For many farmers, especially those who are limited to the local monopolies, mentioned earlier, MSPs ensure they can keep their farms running, make a guaranteed amount of money on their crops, and have the resources to replant for the following season. In a nation faced with endemic issues like low farmer income and farmer suicides, welfare practices like MSPs are godsend. With the passing of farm bills, Indian farmers feared they'd be at the mercy of corporations who would demand even lower prices, effectively squeezing profits from farmers. Among some of the other concerns were new protocols for dispute resolution. Prior to passing of the farm bills, any financial disputes faced in the agricultural sector got their day in court. However, in an effort to reduce governmental involvement, the farm bills relegated disputes resolution to local authorities, which for farmers in rural areas of local monopoly meant dealing with corrupt local law enforcement. I would be remiss to not layer in the still prominent caste conflicts in the rural areas. In many smaller regions of Haryana and Punjab, Dalit farmers face harsh discrimination which compounds the effects of the farm bills on their community. Dalit farmers face a significant land ownership disparity in that they own less land than the upper castes. Their smaller land holdings make them even more vulnerable to economic hardships and many of them are in fact landless agricultural laborers who work on a small daily wages. From a parliamentary point of view, the farm bills would bring India its soil and the promise of its fertility to the forefront. But from the point of view of the farmers, the farm bills would leave them vulnerable and worse off financially. Armed with little more than their collective voice, Indian farmers asserted the very principle of civil disobedience India won its independence on. Satyagraha. Why were these bills passed in Haas without the input of the farmer? Non-violence. 300,000 farmers protesting on the border roads of Delhi alone. Moral force. Bringing national and international focus to the problems in India's agricultural sector. Change from within. The eventual repealing of some of the farm bills and the continued quest to seek labor welfare. Tune in in next video for a closer look at the largest global protest of the 21st century.